Okay, so starting on decision theory, uh, we're first uh, concerned with non-probabilistic uh, decision theory, which means basically, obviously, that there's no probability involved, involved in the uh, decision making. So all the decisions that we're going to concern ourselves with in non-probabilistic decision theory uh, do not contain any probabilities. So what is decision theory? Well, decision analysis refers to a set of methodologies based on expected values, maximum and related criteria that are used to select the best alternative when a decision maker is faced with an uncertainty. So in layman's terms, we're concerned with making the best decision. Let's look at an example. So say that I own land that might contain oil. The value of the land is worth 5 million. To drill for oil costs 12 million. If I find oil, I earn 40 million. However, if I find no oil, obviously the value of the land will decrease and it will be worth only 3 million. So what decisions can we make? We can either sell the land for 5 million or we can take a gamble, drill for oil and see whether it's oily or dry. So there are four possible outcomes. Let's draw a, a table to visualize this. So, say I take the decision that I drill and there's oil, then I make 40 million minus the 12, so I make 28 million because it costs 12 to drill. Say I drill and it's dry, then it costs 12 million and I can only recoup 3 million pounds from the sale. So I'm minus 9 million. Say that I sell the land, well, either way, I get 5 million. So, how do we go about solving this? Well, you'll be glad to know there are three approaches. So the first of these choices is called the max max choice and that is a risk seeking choice. The second is the max min. And we call this a risk averse choice. And the last one is the min max regret. And this choice is risk neutral.
So the first choice we're going to look at is the max max approach. So in this approach we're concerned with the best case scenario. So for every decision we want to find the best outcome. So if you're really optimistic uh, this will probably be your sort of method of choice. And then we find the maximum of these maximum payoffs. So let's go through the table. I'll quickly draw it out. So we have 28, minus 9, 5, and 5. So looking across, if we drill, what's the max? The max is 28. Looking across, if we make the decision to sell, obviously the max is 5. So the max decision overall is 28. So the max max payoff approach would be drill. How about the max min payoff approach? Okay, so this is the best worst case scenario. So this is quite a bit more uh, sensible than the previous method. So for every decision, we want to find the worst outcome and play it safe. Then we choose the maximum of the minimum. So looking across, what's the minimum? Minus 9, 5, and the max of these is 5. I hope that's quite straightforward. So the max min payoff approach would be sell. Finally, we consider the min-max regret approach, which is quite a, uh, an interesting uh, way of looking at things. And you'll understand why in just a second. So if we draw our graph again here, oil, dry and all the rest of it, drill. So, notice I'm leaving a little bit more room here. So, what's our oil regret? Well, our oil regret, if we drill and it's oily, is zero. However, if we drill and it's dry 
our dry regret is equal to 14 because if we, uh, if we take the original land um, the difference between selling it and and uh, drilling and finding out that you haven't actually got any oil is worth 14 million because the original land value would have been 5 so our oil regret if we sell the land is 23 and our dry regret is obviously 0 and if we, uh, I should really write this here but. Our max regret across here is 14, and our max regret across here is 23. So the minimum, because it's our min max regret, is 14. So by the min max regret approach, we have been told to drill.